Hello everyone, it's Jillian here and I'm back for another Canva 2.0 tutorial. I've got my coffee. I could have given you some notice so you could have yours, so I'm sorry about that, but uh, I've got a bit of a grumpy old pup today. So I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that he's just fallen asleep and do this so we don't have any barking in the background. Now today I want to talk about the changes to pages within a design in Canva 2.0. This was something I was really not happy about when I was in the beta test. And if you recall in Canva 1.0, um, I think I should be calling it zero and not sounding so Australian. Uh, the changes that you would do, things like add a page, duplicate a page, uh, move a page up and down, delete a page. A lot of that was in this little section here on the right hand side. So what has happened in 2.0 is add a new page is still there at the bottom. That's great. But this little menu that sat here on the right hand side has moved. It has moved up to the top left hand corner. Now, the reason I wasn't as keen on this is that when it sat here over there on the right, you could just click on anything straight away. So it was a single click action. Now I'm a big fan of single click actions. Anyone who uh, works in the digital space will tell you the more clicks someone has to take, the more frustrating it becomes. But look, I'm going to forgive them, okay Canva, because you've actually added in a few features up here that I really like. So let's just take a look at this drop down menu. So here you can see now you've got a few different things. Um, rename a page, we covered that in one of the other tutorials and that's a nice feature. It looked like it was just cosmetic but in fact it allows and there's my pup barking so much for having a peaceful day uh what it allows you to do is add a name so that when you download you can see both the thumbnail of each page and the name really great feature have a look at the other tutorial on naming pages and downloading if you missed it now obviously you can do some other things here so there's also a second option here to add a new page we have copy page. Now that's what you do if you're creating a um, batch producing your content, which I do all the time, and creating a bit of a template with one similar element that's going to run through all the pages. Now um, I've only got one page up here, but normally you'll be able to see this is grayed out, move up and move down. Now this is an interesting one, add notes. Um, you can actually now add a note into each section, which is fantastic if you're going to be turning these pages into a presentation. And you also have the delete page option there. Again, that's grayed out because I've only got one page up there. Now I wanna focus on the really exciting news that I discovered. Um, let me take a sip of my coffee because I'm getting overexcited. Hold on. Oh, that's good. Okay, back to it. Um, it's early morning here in Australia and I'm onto my second coffee and still waking up. So what I think is fantastic is this whole section down here where we are going to add more pages. Now, obviously, because I am duplicating this, what I'm going to do is copy the page. So that's really great. Um, as we go through now, I want to speed up this process. So I'm just going to add new pages to show you what I'm getting at. But normally I would be copying the pages. So I create a set of templates. So it will, what it does often when you add a new page, it will pick up the background of the previous page, but not any of the elements that you've put on the page. So it's really important. If you add a new page, consider this, adding a new page will as a general rule, pick up just the background of the previous page. But if you want to actually duplicate everything that's on that page, you're going to have to go to this top menu and click copy page. Now, what we're going to do is I just want to show you this. I'm just going to be clicking like crazy here for a minute. So that's going to be a little bit boring for everyone watching. Uh, so I'll just talk about my day. I'm actually doing something really exciting today. I'm going off to present a seminar on selling on Instagram uh, to a group uh, through a college in Melbourne called the Left Bank. They've asked me to do this seminar and it's a really interesting topic and something I hadn't actually grouped together into a proper format before, even though I know a lot about it. So stay tuned. You're going to be hearing more about that from me in the future. It's been great and I've put together some really information, good information. Okay, back to this. Um, you can see now I'm at page 30. Now that was the standard point for 
Canva 1.0. That was it. You would get a message there saying you've reached the limit of pages in your design. They did not tell anyone this anywhere and I have access to all of the portals and the private group and everything like that and no one said anything. But magically when I was putting something together yesterday, I'm putting together this social media bundle, a really simple set of designs that people will be able to buy and use on their Instagram. And I was putting that together, working on that last night, and there's about 200 of them in the bundle. And as I was working on it, um, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to do X number of 30 page designs to finish this. And I got to 30 and I didn't see the message come up saying you've reached the maximum number of pages. And I'm thinking, hmm, what's going on here? So I started clicking. And I went, well, hold on, Canva, this is huge. Uh, and I kept clicking and I'm probably not gonna show you everything here because this could get really boring and I'll run out of coffee. The great news is, you can see there I'm up to page 42. Well, guess what? It now goes to 100 pages. That is a game changer for a lot of us. If you're batch producing content, if you're making eBooks, the big frustration everyone was having was 30 pages, it's just not always enough. Particularly if you're doing a batch um, producing effort for a month and you've got a month with 31 days. So frustrating, the number of times I had to create one extra design with a single page in it to have a month of content for a particular design. Now, a word of warning. Um, a lot of people complain at times about Canva freezing or the design stalling. Now, yes, it can be something at Canva's end. They might have a whole lot of activity on their server. There might be a system issue, but I can tell you something, and this is the truth because it's something I have tested over and over again. Often the reason a design stalls is your system. It can be so many reasons. Sometimes it is your broadband. You just might not have the bandwidth for what you're trying to do. Some of the things you can do is try closing tabs, try shutting down any of the applications you're using that you're not currently in at the moment so you can focus all of your system on Canva. Now, another reason it happens is the design elements in there are just too big. Um, it happens. Sometimes the design, we've got to remember this is browser based. This is not something sitting in your own computer. You're sitting in the internet with everybody else. So your system is going to struggle. The internet is going to struggle. Canvas servers are going to struggle. I get that it's frustrating because it's happened to me and it's, I just wanted to scream when I've done a whole lot of work and it suddenly stalled. So I did learn the hard way to really make sure that my system was operating at full capacity. Now that means things like that for me, I don't know if you can see this down there. I don't think you can. Oh yes, you can. You'll see something down here I've got, which is I use OneDrive. So OneDrive syncs all of my um, work on my computer into the cloud so that I've got a backup. Now I discovered that you know when I have OneDrive on, it starts sucking on the internet. If someone's streaming video in the house or using anything, they can be sucking the internet. Always look for all of those things before you panic. Now sometimes, and this has happened for me, if you shut them down, it will actually stop the stall. There's no guarantee. So this is a long way of explaining a real problem but that this real problem could impact your ability to use this new feature, which is having a 100 page design. If you want to use the 100 pages, think about the fact that you need to have your system operating really well. You need to make sure you're the only one using the internet and really think carefully about the design elements that you're putting on your page. So if you've got things like images that you're putting up, really have a look at what you've uploaded and then what you're using them for because the size of those images that you're then putting into your artwork is just going to slow it down. Now, really think about that. Think about how you can optimize everything you're putting into your design so you can really take advantage of these 100 pages. Remember, if you're going above 100 pages, there are still some amazing free programs online you can use that convert um, several PDFs into one PDF. And um, I'll add a couple of links to some good ones in the comments here. So um, what I would recommend is, you know, 
just remember if you're going over 100 pages, it's okay to have two design folders, download as a PDF and then combine the files together. Anyway, that is it. It's been quite a long conversation, longer than I intended because I did want to get into that issue of design stalling because that is one of the downsides of having 100 page designers. You are going to be much more vulnerable uh, to a design stalling because the system can't handle the load. So approach the 100 pages with caution. Use it for things that are fairly um, low size. And if you're going into anything larger, be very, very conscious of the elements you're putting on the pages because if you have too many high-res images on there, you're going to start slowing down. Anyway, Big shout out to Michelle who's there and following along. Hi, thanks for being there. There's a few people liking. Um, I don't know who's here, but I'm sure many people will catch up with this afterwards. Again, sorry for going a bit long. This is the problem when I'm drinking a coffee while I'm doing a live tutorial. I could actually go on forever. Um, hope you're enjoying this. I will be back with some more fantastic little Easter eggs that I have dug up in Canva 2.0. And um, hi, Lorena, I'm waving back at you. Um, must look quite ridiculous. I'm sitting here with a coffee in one hand and waving at the computer at people. Um, luckily, no one can see me. All right, have a fantastic day. And I'll be back tomorrow with another tutorial on something that I've dug up on Canva 2.0 and add your questions in. I'm um, happy to answer them all. Bye. Oh, hi, Jennifer. Caught you just before I signed off. See you later, everyone. <laughs>